Hello and welcome. My name's Campbell and this is Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're all having a fabulous day. And today I wanted to talk about uh, some movies that I've recently seen. And uh, it's three movies. They all have uh, Mr. Tom Cruise in them and they all have a very similar theme that I've picked up on. And so I just thought, yeah, we'd have a bit of a chat about a bit of truth in movies. So let's get into it. All right, so I'm not a big movie watcher, but uh, recently I watched, um, I was watching Howdy McCloskey and he did uh, like a decode on Vanilla Sky. And I'd heard about Vanilla Sky a few times as uh, a good movie with some truth drops in it. So um, I actually went, went to watch it and went onto a site and another Tom Cruise movie came up called Oblivion. And so I watched that one first and Oblivion. Now, if you haven't seen these movies, um, you might want to turn off and watch them first because I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm going to be talking about them, obviously, and about the plots. So just so that you're aware. Um, Oblivion. Now, this one was uh, is a couple of years old, sort of around 2017, I think. And Oblivion is a story about Earth that has been invaded by an alien entity. And the main theme of it is, is that they have tricked uh, the main character, Tom Cruise, into believing a different story than what's actually happening on Earth. And uh, just a bit of background is, you know, it's got to do with space and stuff. And basically, he was cloned. He and uh, the lady who he thinks is his wife were cloned uh, by this alien. Uh, it's not even an alien. It's like a big machine a big vessel spaceship thing with ai and basically what it does is it it gives tom a false narrative so tom is running around thinking that he's saving the world and that he's doing the right thing and he thinks that uh that basically they had a war and the world got destroyed and so now what the, what's happening is they've got these big machines over the ocean and they're sucking all the uh, water up and uh, turning it into energy, basically. And he thinks they're doing that so that they can move to the moon of Titan, where all the humans have gone because uh, the world got destroyed. And, of course, it didn't. And, you know, the plot in the end is that it's the aliens obviously stealing all the resources. And Tom has been cloned and he's he's had his memory wiped and he's been given new memory. So he thinks he's running around fighting the aliens and uh, helping humans collect energy for their new world, when what he's really doing is fighting the humans um, who, who are trying to save the Earth, and he's helping the aliens. And he does learn this. Uh, basically, he, he ends up meeting his his real wife uh, through circumstances and and a uh, few other things. And, and people get, get him to go and look at things because they know that they can, you know, you can't always just explain things to people. People need to experience things for themselves. So the earth is all uh, boarded off because of nuclear war, right? So there's all these radiation zones where Tom thinks he can't go because you'll die. But, you know, through uh, some events, he ends up in a, in one of these zones, he finds out there's no radiation. But what he finds is himself, a clone of himself. And this is, of course, where it all starts to unravel. And so the premise of this is aliens, obviously, that, you know, we've been invaded by some, you know, sort of parasitic type force. It's not a, it's not, you know, an entity. It's not a being like we are, uh, but it's AI. And it's, it's using a false narrative to get him to, to work for them and to believe that he's doing the right thing. And this is, of course, what we see in the world around us at the moment. You see all these people running around, yelling at people, um, being abusive, throwing hate, and even being violent towards people because they think that some people who are walking and breathing naturally without any muzzle on their face are actually trying to kill them. And some of these people actually believe this. And so they're going around 
doing they think that they're fighting for the good of humanity when actually what they're doing is destroying it they're bringing in the nwo you know fascism all this kind of stuff and they're helping bring it in and they're loving to do it because they believe they're doing the right thing and this is how they've been tricked and this is how we're all tricked and and so the theme of this movie was really it was a deception of perception there you go <laughs> the deception of perception so he really believed he was doing the right thing and other people had to show him you know had to not tell him but show him that things weren't quite what he thought they were and when he got that he he realized he woke up and of course you know it was tom cruise so he went and saved the world killed the alien and everyone was happy and the second movie that i watched was vanilla sky uh, so i saw vanilla sky that's from 2001 so that one's 21 uh, 20 years old and vanilla sky if you haven't seen it is is all about again reality and perceptions and dreams and what is real and what is what is not real you know what, what can we believe and it's all got to do with him waking up in in the dream and, and he he can't get out of this dream and the weird things are happening and it's, it's not reality as he knows that reality starts to shift and his whole world starts to fall apart wow what's happening at the moment right and basically in the end of this it turns out that well, the story says that he actually paid to be put into like an induced coma type thing where he was basically dreaming. And so this reality that he thought he was living that seemed extremely real to him was actually a dream. It had been imposed. It was actually a program. Again, AI comes into it. And it was a program um, of the of the world that he was in you know, when he signed this contract to go into this uh, deep sleep thing, um, basically he was going to die and he was deformed and things. So, um, yeah, he basically committed suicide and they saved him and then put him into this dream, you know, uh, on ice, cryogenically froze him. And he was sitting there for 150 years. But the point is he thought he was in reality. He thought he was living his real life, but it was all a dream. And Again, this is the thing, guys. Where are we now? I mean, we're, we're living in an imposed reality. It's like we're in the dream because what we're seeing is not real because of what we've been told is real and what we believe is real, right? The be lie. Um, the, you know, they, they give us this false narrative and they spend our whole lives just, just hammering it in and repeating and repeating and repeating and because they know that if they stop that, they will start to think and then they're done. And... One, one point I will make up if you have, uh, I will bring up, sorry, if you have seen Vanilla Sky is the very first scene. He is, he, he's in a dream, right? He's driving his car and it, it's a Ferrari. It's not his normal car and he's driving it down the road and there's no one there. And he gets out and it's very strange. And then he wakes up. Now, when he wakes up, he's next to, you know, his first girlfriend and his face isn't damaged. And... He's just woken up from the dream. But it, at the at the conclusion of the movie, they tell him that the point that he entered the dream was after he'd had this accident that, you know, had disfigured his face. But in the first scene, he didn't have a disfigured face, a disfigured face. So when you watch it at the end, you realize, and I, like I said, I don't know if everyone picks up on this, but the whole thing was a dream. The whole thing. So, so. And, and so it's a dream within a dream within a dream. And this is a concept that, that you know, we get a lot, dream within a dream within a dream uh, and all this stuff. And these, that's where we are. That's where we are, right? It's a dream. If it's not real, if, if we're seeing things that aren't really there and we're not using our perception because we're being told it doesn't exist, then we're, we're living in a dream world, right? It's not really quite quite real. I mean, and what is the dream is the next question. Is life the dream? And when we go to... It's a dream world that's actually life. You know, if they, if they just switch things on us, we don't know. Uh, what we know is things are a bit weird. And and we seem to get lots of um, themes in movies and truth shops. And it, it's always, it always tends to be the same actors. These these high, you know, A-grade a Hollywood actors, they always, they're the ones that are put out there to, to um, impose the narrative, to tell the stuff. But they also like to put truth drops in, and I'm not sure why there is um, a, 
you know, a group of people who think that it's because they have to, that it's some kind of, you know, universal spiritual law that they have to tell us what they're doing. And that may be it, or maybe they just are arrogant and they're trying to laugh at us and saying they don't even see what we're showing them. Uh, but of course we do. Now, the third movie was called The Edge of Tomorrow. And same thing, uh, aliens come and attack. And these aliens are a bit different. They, um, pretty interesting movie. And I would recommend watching all three because I'm actually not, like I said, I'm not a big movie fan and I'm definitely not a Tom Cruise fan, but I really I did enjoy all three of these movies. So Edge of Tomorrow, he, he basically, he gets shafted and sent to the front line of a war to fight you know, the aliens, right? And uh, when he gets there, he gets sent out. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's not trained and he dies pretty quickly. But when he dies, he he, he kills a certain alien uh, that drips this blood stuff on him. And so he dies, but then he wakes up the next morning at the same spot that he'd woken up the morning before. So he gets into a time loop. And no matter what happens, he just keeps waking up and whenever he dies, he'll wake up at the start of the day. And what it is, is it's it's an alien entity again, right? And it's very AI, you know, it's very based on the, the concept is that there's like a brain that is somewhere and then uh, all it's like sort of little, these aliens go out and fight people and kill them. That's like it, they say it's like it's nervous system. And then there's these more like the alpha uh, aliens who control, you know, are more of a control for the, the soldier aliens. And they're, they're sort of supposed to be a part of the brain, like, like the, um, the, the reasoning, the thought kind of thing. So you have this brain that's the control center. It sends out thoughts to these other aliens and then they sort of control and it goes out to the nerves or whatever who go out and do the actual fighting. So it's, it's this one big entity that's joined. So it's very parasitic. Okay. It's like the, it's, it's, an entity that that's controlling a lot of different entities. And this is what a parasite is. This is what an archon is. Uh, and this is what we see in the world at the moment. We seem to see lots of uh, people that are doing very strange things, like they're being controlled by something, by some force. And of course, I'm sure you all know the backstory. You know, when you look into what goes on uh, in these parties and behind closed doors of these, you know, deletes, shall we call them, uh, you know they're not good people. Obviously, they're not. They're not even like us. The stuff they do is very non-human, and so uh, these people are being controlled by a parasitic entity, which is not us. It's not us. It, it has no creativity. Uh, it's very left brain, and it's all about control. And I mean, this is what we've been told about. Okay, this is the archon, the devil, all these things. And this is what these people are worshipping, okay, is this Archon. So all these movies, they talk about something has come in. It's alien and it's based on AI. And it has changed our perception of time and our perception of reality and where we are. Uh, and, I mean, all three movies have the same theme. And look where we are, guys. What's going on? Uh, we are now in a place where this is all coming true. And I mentioned this on a, a chat I had. Uh, I can't remember who it was with. I think it was with Martin the other day. Uh, that basically all the songs and all the movies and even TV shows that have we've had in the past 50 years or whatever, they all seem to be talking about this point right now. They seem to be leading us to this point. Okay, And, and as we know, they try and tell us that time is a line. It's linear but it's not, it's circular. Okay, that's why we have ages, right? We've just changed age because it's circular. And this is how they've changed our perception of time, right? They teach us, oh, no, no, you started as a spark and it's all this lineal sequential stuff and now you're here. And that makes us the epitome, right? Because everything that came before us was, was worse and, and was a lower level, you know, not as evolved. Uh, but that's clearly wrong. We know what we see in the past, We, we you know. We've checked out his story and it doesn't add up. And we have these cities, these antiquities, all these anomalies. And I mean, at this point, they're not even really anomalies. Uh, it's, it's They're the norm. The anomalies is when they're getting smashed over and all this other crap that's being put up. And of course, that is a big, big hint. Okay, we have this beautiful, 
beautiful architecture based on free energy that clearly was inspired by the right the right brain and creativity and what do the those who uh, wish to rule us these parasites do they knock all that over they smash it and they put boxes up like the borg another concept the borg in star trek same concept ai comes along alien force uh takes people over and then they start working for the borg they become part of the collective part of the hive the hive mind and that's another thing these archons that they're, they're, they're they're hive minded. They're like insects. They're like um, like termites. You know, with termites, they've done tests and they've worked out that termites. When you have one termite, it has pretty much no intelligence. But when you have a, a group of termites, or especially a big nest of, of hundreds of thousands of them, suddenly they're intelligent uh, because termites. Did you know termites keep cattle? Or what they call cattle, they keep bugs as their cattle um, that they milk. Um, they have storage. They have all these things. They, they even have machines. They make little uh, sort of sleds or something um, that they move around. And so, so they get intelligence, but on their own, they've got nothing. This is the same as the Archon, is it spreads out and it uses lots of people for its intelligence because it's it's, it's got a million eyes now, right? And this is what it's all about is collecting data. This is why, I mean, look around. This is why they want us to get all these apps to sign in everywhere to let them know where we're going. You know, the social credit score, um, big, you know, older brother is watching eye in the sky, all this kind of stuff to collect data so that they can fight us better. Because this is another theme in edge of tomorrow where he kept reliving the same day. What they worked out is this alien, uh, the alien brain could manipulate time. And so what it would do is it would go, onto, you know, into a new world, obviously in their perception, it's onto a planet and it would attack and it would see what happened. And then it would just reverse time and do the same day over and over again. So it was just getting more data every day so that, so that in the end it had, it had done the battle a thousand times and it knew exactly what to do to win, you know, without any losses. So it was collecting data. And of course, Tom got the power and he started using it against it. He was then collecting the data of how to beat it. But this is the same thing. This is this is what it's doing. It's collecting data on us. It's trying to make all these, you know, data banks, all this surveillance stuff everywhere, all this tracking and tracing. And it's so it can have more information about how about how to destroy us, how to defeat us, because it's having troubles. It's not working. And as uh, the further we get into this, the more it's failing. Because the thing about the Archon is it's left-brained. It can't think. It has no creativity. It has to use us. This is why it controls the music industry. And we've seen what's happened with the music industry, right? Look at the music from the 60s, 70s, even the 80s, and look at it now. There's no, no musicians left. It's not creative. It's clearly just written by left-brained men in suits. You know, all they know is, oh, let's make a few things rhyme and then we'll get a girl to shake her butt and we'll promote the hell out of it and we'll make money. But it's it's not even about making money. It's about programming us and about, you know, all these, all these you know, clips with movies that are coming out and this Cardi B kind of stuff. It's, 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 it's disgraceful. It's aimed at our children and it's to demoralize and diminish them and to, to make them think that they're just this, this body and all, all that their value is, is, is how they look and you know, what they've got. Right. So it's a big false paradigm because our real wealth is, is nature and ourselves and our thoughts and the abundance of earth. That's the power. And they're trying to teach us that there is no abundance. Really? Go get a piece of fruit. <laughs> you know, look at a fruit tree, every piece of fruit, even if it's a stone fruit, every piece of fruit has one seed. So that's the ability to create a whole new tree full of a whole new fruit, it, every single fruit. So there is nothing but abundance. You know, scarcity is a lie. So this is what these movies are telling us is that we have been invaded by a parasitic AI intelligence that is, its weapon is to change our perception of where we are. 
okay? And it collects data on us to do that more efficiently all the time. And it keeps changing and changing and changing. Of course, we have things like the Mandela effect as well, you know, to consider. And if it does this enough, we start to believe that the world it's showing us is real. And, and when we do that, we start to act like it's real. When we start to act like it's real, we start to create the world that they want. You know, we become their bitches. We become the parasites and we become, you know, the army to bring in whatever this entity wants to do. And of course we know, I mean, look around, we know what they want, total control, lockdown, you'll own nothing and be happy, right? Uh, so the video is not so much about that, but definitely guys, time to stand up, draw that line. Uh, but but this is the thing they tell us they tell us what's going on they don't tell us exactly the story but they give us all this information and and if you look at these and as, like i said especially these a great actors look at the the movies that they do and and look at the themes and how they they're, they're all so similar i mean how many movies have been made about the earth getting invaded by aliens from space Um, they are everywhere. They're everywhere. Star Wars in the 70s. That, and this is what they do. They, they, they put it, first of all, they put it out as this amazing, fantastic thing. You know, like, oh, you can be an adventurer and go and explore the universe and find all these amazing planets and peoples and it's so wonderful. Uh, but then after a while, it starts to turn. It starts to get a bit dark. And suddenly it's it's not running around having fun exploring space. Suddenly it's we're on Earth and people are attacking us, aliens. Um, they're coming to kill us. And, and that, that narrative has been going, well, since War of the Worlds, right? Orson Welles back in the 30s. Uh, and, and this is the thing. It's the same narrative. And as I said, you know, not everyone gets a platform. There's only a certain amount of people that get the platform on the news. You know, the authors, the actors, the singers. There's not that many, and they all are towing the line because to get there, you need to tow the line. You don't get to be one of these people unless you do what you're told. And, of course, you know, it seems like they're writing their own songs, and I think most of the time they are, but I think what's going on is it all gets reviewed, and, and they just have to, they're just made to change a few different words. And, that, and those words, they just, they're, they're made to get into our psyche. They're not made to be like, a, oh, my God, did you hear that? It's just subtle repetition, just getting into your subconscious. And this is how they do it. So, you know, if it's a good song and, you, and seems to have good, you know, themes and everything, you'll get into it, you'll let it in. And then they just chuck a few words in there, a few little verses and phrases uh, to, to implant what they want you to believe. And that's how they do it. And so all these people, all these actors, um, especially Tom, you know, uh, they're out there working the agenda for these people. You know, they are. They're, they're, they're like the news crews who, who call themselves reporters, but they're actually repeaters because all they're doing is repeating a narrative. And, of course, they're paid very well for this and they're given privileges and they get to fly around the world and be famous and everyone loves them and they get all this money. And But for that, they have to sell their soul. They have to sell out to the Archon. And this is another big clue that, you know, there's a, it's like George Carlin said, it's a club and you ain't in it. And we know this. We don't get to go and talk to these people and, and affect, you know, what's in the books and the, the, the information. And even and when we do now, we get banned. Okay, so, it, it, you know, we're, we're in a point now where it's, it's, it's under attack. It thinks that this is it. All right? and it's probably because we're changing ages. It, it's freaking out, this Archon entity. Uh, and so it's pushing and pushing and pushing, but the harder it pushes, the more it really exposes it itself. And and I'm saying itself and Archon because it really is, you know, it's like a hive mind entity. That's why we see people like Slow Joe, you know, up there and the guy can't speak. Um, his eyes are black. Uh, I'm going to do a video soon as well just on um, deep fakes and masks. And who are these people? We don't even know that they are who they say they are. And, and we've seen these, these kind of clips a lot, you know, there's a lot of weirdness going on. You know, who are all these people? Where are they? Why is there gates up everywhere? Why is everything locked? It's very, very strange. But the answer is, is this is their last effort, their last push to try and, and they're not trying to get us because they know they can't. Their time for us is up. What they're trying to do is grab as many, you know, souls 
and how, we've, we've heard this narrative, right? They're up collecting souls. And, and where do they want to take those souls? To hell. What's hell? Hell is a low vibration. You know, I don't think it's a pit full of fire and brimstone. It might be, but it's a lower vibration. So they're trying to get all these people to believe their narrative, to keep them in this low vibration so that they can have people to control for the next age. That's what's going on. And they seem to have a few on their side, you know, out there fighting the war for them. But all these people are, are being tricked and they're going to end up having to, to live through the karma of what they're doing. And, and this is, you know, we've got the whole, you know, um, mark of the beast. Can I say that? Was that a sentence? YouTube fact checkers, um, you know, on the forehead, on the wrist. It's written in the... We know this stuff. And even people who say they are Christians are going out and getting this stuff. This is how insane people are. And these people are insane because the Archon is insane. It's insane. You know, this entity that's taking over, it's it's insane. As far as our perception of it, I guess, um, it's just so far removed from what we are that it's insane. It doesn't make any sense at all. It comes from a completely different place. And the place it comes from is it wants to be God. It wants to be God. It thinks that if it can create its, create its own creation, that it will be God of that creation. Uh, that's what this entity wants. And um, make no bones about it, guys. We've, we've, we have been invaded. Look around. Look around. Been invaded, but not by, you know, little green men, by some kind of parasitic AI by the looks of it. And it's trying to create its own creation. It's trying to get everyone to, to follow it and to believe it so it can create this, this weird world that it can be the god of. And that's and so if you if you're following it, then obviously you're not following you know the true source or God or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, you, you you've <laughs> you've bought the lie. You've bought the lie based on nothing. There is no evidence that anything is happening. And so this is supposed to be about movies. So back to the movies. This is, it's just the same theme over and over and over again. Something invades. Uh, it's all about fear. You know, they give this whole thing, oh, we've got to do this and this to save the earth, to save humanity. Uh, most of the time it ends up that we're working for the baddie. And, I mean, in the end, we always win, though. That's another thing. Pretty much in all these movies, we win. So I think it knows that it, it can't keep going for too much longer, at least not with people that, that can see what's happening, shall we say that? So, um, yeah, that's really just what I wanted to talk about. Just those movies and just the theme. So, look around at the world, guys. This this seriously is happening. This, I mean, if you've got another um, opinion or another explanation for what's going on, I would love to hear it. Please leave it in the comments. Uh, but after years and years and years, literally, of research. I've done a lot of research into the whole Archons and the Archon agenda and the Gaia and all this kind of stuff. Um, it, my senses tell me that's all true. And the people who are saying these things, I would trust a lot more than the people who have written the book saying that stuff like that is just silly and doesn't exist. And so this is what we, we you know, we have to make sure that we're getting right information from people with ethics uh, that aren't going to be lying to us. But most of all, we need to trust ourselves to make the best decision of what is truth and what is not uh, because in the end you know, that's it if, if you can't make your own decisions and you can't stand by them well you know you've, you've lost you know, it's time that we all learn to make solid decisions based on ethics and then stand there in that power and not let others sway us because this is what they want to do they want to change who we believe we are and when they do that they will literally change who we are and this is history so what side of history do you want to end up on so there you go guys truth in movies truth in movies with tom cruise so check them out if you haven't seen them already uh, if you've got any other movies um that are good truth drops uh leave them in the comments and also like i said if you if you know if you think there's something else going on please let me know um because yeah I'm, I'm definitely open to as many points of view as i can get because uh, that's what we need to work this to solve this issue and get rid of this parasite because um, it, yeah, it's not very good, is it? It's changing our lives. It's trying to control us, take away our freedoms and literally just think of where we'll be in a few generations if it, if it does create its own reality to be God of 
but it won't because it's insane. So there you go, guys. Uh, yeah, just a bit of a chat. I hope you enjoyed that one. A bit on movies. Um, yeah, please give me a like, subscribe, share this content if you find it interesting. And of course, a big thank you to everyone who does support this channel in whatever way you can uh, through liking, sharing, subscribing, and also everyone who does support me uh, through PayPal and Patreon and my merch store. And you'll find links for that below if you do want to contribute. And just one more thing I'll say is, um, you know, with, with what's going on at the moment with this platform, YouTube, and censorship and everything that's going on, this whole agenda, because clearly they're on the side of, you know, those that want to control us. Uh, I'm going to be putting a, a, you know, a concerted effort into moving off this platform. Uh, one, I don't want to self-censor. I don't want to be censored. And I also don't want to feed the beast. So I have all my stuff is up on Odyssey. Um, I'm still building BitChute. It's just taking a while. It's got a few upload issues, but everything is on Odyssey. So the links are below for Odyssey and BitChute. Please go and subscribe to them because, you know, we really need to start um, you know, changing habits and getting maybe into the habit of, of logging into Odyssey in the morning rather than YouTube and checking out uncensored material and supporting the platforms that are supporting us. And because this is what it is, we've got to stick together. You know, people who are good with ethics need to stick together against these insane whatever they are that are inhabiting the world with us at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. Uh, stay awesome because you are. And I'll talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now.